Don in London, hello. October the 1st, new month. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both in my case. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour could be also addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be in the right place with the right people, with the right things, doing the right things, wanting the right things, always wanting, wanting, wanting. Wanting to feel right about life and good enough. So some of my deficits, if you like, that I learned over the years, never feeling quite good enough, never feeling quite right about the situation, and having to keep on learning life over and over again, somehow to fit in and be a part of. How to be, how to love people, be loved back, and useful. And over the years, uh, alcohol was very helpful to me. It kept me going, probably in the wrong direction quite often because I needed to fit in, I needed to know how to be a part of life and I was desperate to love people, be loved back and useful. These days I don't take the edge off with a drink, I don't need a drink, I don't need to fix myself with drink or behaviour around people, places and things and what I've learned not only am I powerless over alcohol I'm also powerless over people, places and things. And if I thought I ever had control over people, places and things, it was an illusion that was created by me to feel good. Which is not such a bad thing in itself, but if it's always that way, how on earth? That's a great big truck going by. It normally collects bottles around this time of day. So there may, may be an explosion of bottles shattering into a truck. It's the hottest day, October day probably, for a century coming up, or since records began. So it's very warm, balmy, and it's going to get steamy. And no doubt people are going to get angry and resentful. Not only at the, their own situation, but, but what, what people are doing around them. It's a, it's a British phenomena. When the weather gets hot, so do tempers, often. So, why do I do these videos? Well, asked and answered. People wanted to know more about how to get sober, and what were the means that I used, and what means are there out there to be utilised if we are ever to find out what sober life can be like. And after 35 years of drinking, it was a bit of a shock to the system. I wasn't good at it to start with learning how to be sober and it was very very painful because I had to let go a lot of old attitudes and behaviour and find out what new attitudes and behaviour I needed to keep well. Same truck, third time round. Maybe it can't find the bottles. Anyway, <coughs> new month and um, what's helped me most? What's helped me most keep sober over the last few years, one day at a time? Well, it started with family, friends, community and professionals, and then it became apparent that whilst they wanted to be helpful, they were never going to be around enough to help me keep my eye on the ball, the sobriety ball if you like, and keep sober. And many people suggested, as I went into this understanding that I was addicted to alcohol and an alcoholic, that I needed constant support. Constant. Support which is always there and available at any time, 24-7. And I became aware of the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous, AA. One thing I know about AA, I never speak for it, but I can share about how it helps me on a daily basis keep sober and why it does. And part of that is because people in fellowship, we learn who can help us and who can't help us daily, who is available, who is not available. And if we have enough telephone numbers in our phone, we can probably find conscious contact with another human being who is still sober when we're thinking about a drink or life is just simply difficult and we don't know what to do next. So I'm very grateful to have actually found my way into a fellowship, something which was completely alien to me. The concept of being a part of a community, well, not me, 
I was always beyond or above that, I thought. I didn't need people. That's how I felt. But I realise now I do need people. I need contact with people who not only can help me, but I feel more comfortable being in contact with family, community and professionals as as is appropriate, rather than thinking the world's against me and I, it's a constant battle and I need more victories to feel better about me. These days it's not a constant battle and I don't need any victories. All I need to be is sober and experience what is possible today. What helps, as I say, what helps me is being in the fellowship of AA. So I share about AA as part of my recovery. I never speak for it, never can, never will, because AA is simply a fellowship of people who find sobriety one day at a time. And each has an equal sized voice, a voice of recovery, and a voice of a person living a unique, authentic life. So we have many similarities in our outlooks, attitudes and behaviour, but each person is of equal size, so I never speak for anyone else. And I cannot speak for fellowship because it is full of unique, authentic people. And it works because we are all trusted service around trusted servants around unity, service and recovery. I don't know where I'd have got to without the fellowship. I reckon my life would have expired a lot sooner because I didn't know how to stop hurting myself with alcohol and I didn't know how to live life without a drink in my hand to the point where I needed to, do, to drink to stop the physical craving and I needed a drink to blot out reality because reality was just plain awful. So how does AA help me? Well, on this little card here is the AA preamble. Inside it, it has the summary of the 12 steps, which is for me and others who want to be sober, and 12 traditions around how the fellowship works. And on the, the reverse side, it has the what's called the serenity prayer. So no matter what your your beliefs are, this this whole understanding of life principles, 12 steps for a person to learn to be open, honest and willing to keep on changing as life changing, changes, and 12 traditions which hold the fellowship of AA together, seem to work for me. I can't speak for anybody else, I can only speak how it works for me, but I share the AA preamble at the beginning of these videos, or near the beginning, so you understand where I'm coming from and what fellowship is about. AA Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other. There's the lorry going past again. It hasn't picked up any bottles yet. What's going on? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other. But they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober, and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So the only requirement for membership, a desire to stop drinking, there are no rules, laws or regulations in AA, because if there were, it would exclude people. So rules, laws and regulations exclude people. So the fellowship decided no rules, no laws, no regulations, just a simple desire to stop. And you don't have to pay, it, pay for it either. So if you're on the bread line like I was, but still a bit uncertain about this thing of you don't have to pay for it. I put a few pennies in when I needed those pennies for food. You don't have to pay anything in, but we try and cover our bills on a, bit, a weekly basis. So we have a prudent reserve available, but we never have large amounts of money in case that becomes an issue. And in AA, everybody has an idea, a belief, an affiliation, 
to a life outside AA and we share about it quite extensively but we don't try and impose our views or opinions on each other because if we did we'd all leave so we listen for what might work for us rather than try and impose what might work for you it comes down to freedom of choice to be ourselves and freedom of choice to find a way forward which will work for us sober rather than under the influence of alcohol or behaviour to be with the right people in the right place doing the right things and driven mad by it so less madness more sanity daily and the fellowship has as I say 12 steps and 12 traditions 12 steps for an individual learning open honest and willing behaviour and outlooks and the 12 traditions which hold us in unity service and recovery so I share about the steps predominantly on these videos how they help and in this book daily reflections it covers one step a month and one tradition a month so October is all about step 10 and tradition 10 and these are how they read so all my videos feature <coughs> featured on a monthly basis are about the steps and traditions and there's also a step reading in, in the collection now for each of the steps so October 10th month 10th step I can hear birds twittering the birds, the flowers, nature has gone a bit strange in the UK I think the birds and, the, and, the, and nature think it's back to being spring again but as temperatures are going to go up to 80 degrees it seems today we'll see how we go October, now we have an Indian summer for three days not a very long one anyway, step 10 reads as this continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong promptly admitted it so part of the, the whole structure of the steps is learning what our life story what got us into drinking what can keep us out of drinking and step 10 is one of the maintenance one steps where we can do a spot check inventory at any time of day and see what what we may do if we're getting disturbed angry resentful or just plain don't know where we are so step 10 is about daily living and tradition Taylor says alcoholics has no opinion on outside is issues hence the AA name ought never be drawn into public controversy so AA as such the fellowship has no opinion on outside issues and that's true because if you're talking about a fellowship of individuals all with their own outlook there is no common outlook to share on outside issues so we don't affiliate with anything and we don't affiliate with me or my videos because I'm just one voice in recovery and I don't represent AA how ironic, I might talk about AA a lot but I don't represent it never can, never will I don't want to how can I represent people when I don't know what's going on inside them so I don't want to represent AA I can only represent what is working for me right now and without the steps of AA I don't know where it'd be so that's how it works for me so step 10 from this book Daily Reflections one page a day concentrating on different steps in different parts of the year so AA Daily Reflection for today lest we become complacent it is easy to let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels we are headed for trouble if we do for alcohol is a subtle foe and that actually comes from the big book of AA which is on the shelf behind me uh, the blue book next to the small bookcase where the telephone is I do read these books they're very helpful because I have stories about sobriety so if I get stuck in the middle of the night and don't know what to do and nobody's answering their phone how dare they I can always do something useful it normally keeps me out of fear and anxiety even if I don't know what I'm fearful of or what I'm anxious about when I am in pain it is easy to stay close to the friends I have found in the program relief that 
from that pain is provided in the solution contained in AA's 12 steps. But when I am feeling good and things are going well, I can become complacent. To put it simply, I become lazy and turn into the problem instead of the solution. So I can go back to old thinking. I'm right and you're wrong. It's where it starts. I know better than you do. And of course I don't. Because I don't know what's good for you. And if I don't know what's good for you, maybe I'll only get a, sm a smidgen of what is right for me. To put it simply, I became lazy. I become lazy and turn into the problem instead of the solution. I need to get into action, to take stock, do an, a little bit of an inventory of myself. Where I am, or where am I, and when, where am I going? A daily inventory will tell me what must I must change to regain spiritual balance. And spiritual balance is being able to cope with what's going on right now. That's how I understand it. Spiritual living it has to be now. Where else can we change? Admitting what I find within myself to God and to another human being keeps me honest and humble. It sounds like the tourists are about on their big motorbikes today. It will be a wonderful day on the King's Road here in London where all the Harley Davidson enthusiasts, what day of the month, first day of the, first Saturday of the month, can't remember which one. And there goes a sports car. Yeah, people are revving up for a summer's day. They'll be out in the parks, drinking themselves silly and getting pink. But coming back to this. Admitting what I find within myself, to God, and to another human being, keeps me honest and humble. So, what is God to me? Well, God, in essence, for me, is... It comes across as truth, love and wisdom. So I can't define God. God is uh, a far bigger subject and entity and whatever it is. I can't, it has no boundaries, God. Truth, love and wisdom, though. Truth informs me. Not my opinion. Learning the truth of now. Love. How to love, be loved back. The most important part of life and useful. And keep on learning the wisdom, which I don't have yet, about what's going to be good for me in the next 24 hours truth, love and wisdom of now. So, an emotional, spiritual program. My feelings fit with reality and I'm coping with it is what I suggest is balance just for now. But balance is something I often see as I swing by. It's another one of the sayings I learned in the fellowship. Balance is something I see as I swing by from extremes of good to not good. So balance is in the moment, whatever it is. And if it's out of balance or it feels bad, time to ring somebody up or ask for help. So some of my thoughts over the last few years, starting with today. Uh, spot check inventories. Help us make progress rather than hinder ours or anyone else. Yeah, so spot check inventory. How am I feeling? Why? What can I do? How are we feeling? Why? And what can we do? It's having a bit of empathy. Help us make progress rather than hinder ours or anyone else. My part in matters, what is disturbing me? Usually, if our feelings are genuine and based on our current situation, we can modify our behaviour, make a good choice, walk in others' shoes, as long as we don't get blisters today. And sometimes, you know, we, we bend over backwards trying to be understanding of another person's point of view. And we try and walk a few yards in their shoes to see how they see it. And often we get blisters because of it, because it's an ill-fitting way of working life. So what can I do in those situations? Well, it's very simple. They have a different point of view to me. I don't want to try and change them to my point of view. So I am best walking away with good grace and saying um, whatever it is I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not with it in this moment right now with where you are and for that I apologise and uh, I need to do something and this is my response often today I may be able to see your point of view especially if I take time to do a spot check inventory of what's disturbing me the inventory will help me decide and make a better choice to continue to be included in the situation or
get the hell out of Dodge due to an emergency in the moment of now and uh, to get get the hell out of Dodge due to an emergency in the moment of now I'll put in, in brackets imminent justifiable anger usually gracious me the lorry for the glass collection has come back again you know this makes me laugh because I've left my windows open as it's going to be a summer's day in October and with any luck you'll hear the rattling crashing bottles which uh, I think you will actually that's the man putting on his air brakes so get the hell out of Dodge is a good uh, suggestion if things are getting heated and out of control I say, I'm so sorry I've, I've got an emergency don't explain it but it's normally an imminent, Im imminent onset of justifiable anger inside me which will lead me to get angry and resentful so I try not to do that did you hear that? That's the first. That's the first batch. These are coming from the Bibendum restaurant across the road from me. That's just the first sortie because it was Friday night last night. Oh, well, that wasn't very many, was it? They must have been around already. Mind you, it is nearly nine o'clock in the morning now life is spectacular around here some of the best restaurants in London just off Sloan Avenue Gauchos, Bybendum and far too many to mention without causing an advert to happen anyway previous years 2005 to 2010 starting with last year step 10 our personal inventory about our conduct our conduct not other people that's more like it it was a good night last night so it's about our personal inventories about our conduct not theirs as we live the steps often we can see apparent horrors in other people's attitudes and behavior or rather we see in others what we hate in ourselves step 10 always our part in life Step 10 hours our part in life. Always needing forgiveness for ourselves and others today. Cherish always. You know, we can love people and hate their behaviour. We can, we can love the stranger and hate their behaviour. Even when they're driving a great big truck and smashing bottles on our doorstep. Ah. Have they stopped? Or is there more? Same year, last year. Am I the problem or part of the solution? We will make mistakes, hopefully as many as we need, to make sense of problems and what the solutions in our conduct need to be and, and what solution, the solutions in our conduct, conduct need to be made. So it's not about their conduct, it's about my conduct. How am I feeling, why and what can I do? So if I'm disturbed and the why is right in front of me, it could be you being angry and horrible. Or it could be you being really nice when I don't want your niceness and love. I need to bugger off. Yes, we will make mistakes, hopefully as many as we need to make sense of problems and what the solutions in our conduct need to be made. Solutions to our part in life, not contingent on what others do or not do. Our choice is to improve as we find solutions. So the whole of the step process is about making solutions. Or well, not making them, but coming and finding as we go along what the solutions may be to the particular situation that we find ourselves in. That was me last year. What was happening last year, October? I was just about able to walk again after ha having damaged, damaged one of my feet with a, a multi fracture which could not be operated on because of other conditions I have, namely type 1 diabetes, which is. Uh, it's been difficult actually I damaged my foot again this year and also damaged my back as well so life has not been too good on the physical front but in my head my sense of humour seems to be there and when my it's, it's funny because when my humour is at an extreme of funniness also my anger can be an extreme of anger and unhelpfulness so extremes are not necessarily so good somewhere in the middle is balance but that thing is I swing by often 
So here we go, new month, new step, October, all about step 10, our personal daily inventory, or just a simple spot check inventory about what's going on. And I wonder when that man's going to go with his lorry, and now I'm getting resentful. Sometimes we can measure our success as another day above ground. I've got a friend around here who walks his dog, who's in the fellowship. I say, how are you today, whatever your name is? And he says, another day above ground. And he's right, we are another day above ground, so something's working. This was said recently to me as a member of the fellowship walked by where I live in London. Indeed, today is another day above ground, and I have a toolkit to help me keep sober today. Step 10 is our, is our personal inventory to help us make the best choices we can as we live sober. Step 10 is about us and our sobriety our attitudes and ways of behaving when life is good and when life is simply difficult. The danger of step 10, like all the other steps, is we can so easily slip into judging others and take their inventory. That's what happens. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. When somebody bothers us, we might actually want to say, bugger off and mind your own business, because we're judging them with our more accurate way of understanding what they're up to and it's wrong not only for them but for us but that's a judgment on them the better way is to say I need to bugger off and mind my own business it is me judging me and my attitudes and behaviour I need to get, get out of here get the hell out of Dodge before I start becoming angry and resentful or justifiable, justifiable anger is rising in me and I can't afford it because it will spoil my day now I'm smiling when I say that because in the moment of now I might say bugger off and mind your own business because you're in the wrong. But then of course I'm raising the bar and raising the temperature. And I have been known to do this quite often simply because I know I'm right. But that is no reason for doing it because it spoils me, it spoils my outlook and I have to think about it over and over again until I reconcile. I did get angry in the moment of now and I wish I hadn't done that. Although, you see, there is a part of me perverse which says, now I've got my freedom back to make good choices, why shouldn't I tell you to bugger off and mind your own business? And the answer is you might have a gun in your pocket. Well, we normally have an emotional gun at hand. We're all good at uh, hurting each other in when we are provoked. It's part of life. But that part of life won't serve me well today. A step to improve the quality of our spiritual living, open and honest, we are willing to change. And this step involves reflection on what has worked today and what has not worked, or simply stopping in the moment of now, saying, hang on a minute, I need to get out of here, get the hell out of Dodge before I start getting really involved, because I know I'm right. Being right doesn't mean it's going to work out. Understanding problems, understanding the problems and living in the solutions we have. Better choices. I've lost my place. Yes. Start again. A step to improve the quality of our spiritual living. Open, honest and willing. We are uh, open and honest. We are willing to change. And this step involves reflection on what has worked and what has not worked. Understanding the problems and living in the solutions we have. Better choices and better outcomes. As we reflect on each day, we are meditating too. Meditation is part of our spiritual development, seeing the truth, ability to cope with reality. As we reflect each day, we are meditating. Meditation is part of our spiritual development. Meditation and prayer are more deeply understood as we live. Step 11. Now how did that one pop in there? Step 11 is about prayer and meditation. Maybe I've got the wrong list here. No, it says October. But now, you see, I didn't read it before I started sharing it. Ah, yes. Prayer and meditation is a part of step 10 for me. Step 10, 11 and 12. Always, steps are about our personal development, our to toolkit to live well. Needs met, our wants tend to disappear. Needs met, exclamation mark. Steps are not a way to get something we want, Wants tend to be what we imagine life should be. I want to be free. Well, I am free. Well, why don't I feel free? The answer is because I haven't got everything I want yet. But my needs are met, so why am I complaining? 
wants and expectations undermine our living and often said by many in recovery wants and expectations are resentments under construction so part of my spot check inventory is hang on a minute uh, am I trying to f feel like I deserve something more than what I have right now what have I done to achieve it so spiritual balance is achieved by needs met once forgotten for me that's where it came from resentments and anger serve no one long term we will get angry and resentful often that is a problem all humans face and as we work through our step 10 daily or just spot checks when things are going a bit weird we see solutions and we and or we learn to let go see our part in matters developing our realistic choices by the day so there is always a choice to sound off and be a smart ass or just tell people where to go what good will it do make, make us feel better for a moment and then we have to work out well you know that's really going to spoil my day now because I've, I've hurt someone and hurting people just hurts us step 10 helps us understand life we always have the serenity prayer to help us with our needs and wants in any moment God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change I can't change some things normally people around me places and things courage to change the things I can me and my attitudes I can change those and the wisdom to know the difference well that happens in the moment of now right now words from others on step 10 continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong promptly admitted it this step has absolutely no connection with step 4 note in step 4 it calls for a searching and fearless moral inventory this step calls for a personal inventory this step is our daily check on ourselves so step 4 is the life story you know what's worked and what hasn't worked who are we angry at resentful at normally ourselves and other people but the uh, spot check inventory is what's going on now or how has my day been what disturbed me today and what am I grateful for an excerpt from a recovery website at night after you are in bed and the day is over review your day and pray think about your day what you have done who you were with and what has transpired if you find something that you are not proud of apologize do not permit these things to go un unattended it's not it's not the so-called big things which seriously affect the old alcoholic in their new life but the little things and it is you know if we, if we have an elephant in the room and it's a big thing we can normally deal with it call a zoo and get 30 people to get the bloody thing out of there but if it's a small thing it can just start to build up and build up to a sense of unease about ourselves so better to deal with the small things on a daily basis because they will become big diligent practice of the tenth step every day reinforces that character defects be quickly became damned obvious on a daily basis admitting a wrong is difficult unless we keep on doing it it's not to say oh I'm so sorry I'm wrong admitting the wrong that we're just about to do is often a good place that we get to hang on a minute this can go wrong we have entered the world with the spirit which is living in the moment of now the spiritual world is now the absolute reality of now where we can actually do something about life so if spirit, spiritual living is in the moment of now guess where God, God may reside but you know God is what your personal understanding is not mine so for me truth, love and wisdom are where God starts because truth, love and wisdom is in everyone and if, any, if anything God works through people it's your personal understanding which counts as a higher power you can't manufacture a higher power as such except no you're not it not even in your own life you know we are interdependent on everything around us so how we work with what is is absolutely wonderful because if we know where we are we know where we can go we know where we can go what's realistic what are the next steps towards the dream we have to be whatever we want to be and I've often found not knowing where we want to go is better than knowing where we're going because it gets down, goes downhill very quickly if I only use my perception 
for myself and what I think the world ought to be. I am a prisoner of my own invention. But if I am open to what is going on around me and can listen to what's going on around me, I am open to the possibilities that are there for everyone in that situation. So my own perception narrows me down. Every time I dream of a goal which I cannot even imagine how to get to, that's a fantasy. And fantasies will cause resentments because you fantasies will cause resentment. Yes. Admitting a wrong is difficult. We have entered the world of the spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. It should continue for a lifetime. And of course we are learning for a lifetime either to stay the same, which may not work for us, or to change, because the world is changing, we need change with it. <sighs> Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment and fear. So selfishness, my, my, my way or the highway, dishonesty, mind over matter, I don't mind and you don't matter, resentment, why have you got what I should have? And fear, when will I ever get there? I'm frightened that well, I will never make it as a going concern again. And the answer is, selfishness doesn't work because I need to be with people and listen and be a part of. Dishonesty means that I can only see my point of view and no other point of view. Resentment, because it's not my way. And fear, why should I fear newness? Why should I fear the world as it is today? unless I've done something to pull myself out of it or to criticise it and judge it as not good for me. When these things crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. And for me, asking for truth, love and wisdom, the truth of now, love, to be the foundation and wisdom from others, is a great higher power for me. It's not me, I'm not the higher power, but the collective wisdom of the world, nature, providence and everything. It's all out there and not inside me. So I need to keep on opening up. We discuss them with someone immediately and to make amends quickly if we've harmed anyone, including ourselves of course. Self-harm is the easiest one to do by closing down and becoming dishonest again. And we have ceased fighting anything or anyone, even alcohol. Yeah, it's not about fight or battle. It's about it's about temperance in the moment of now. For by this time sanity will have, uh, re have returned. We will seldom be interested in liquor. Well that's true actually. But we do talk about it constantly in fellowship. Maybe that's why we're so, we just don't think about it anymore. It's not on our mind. We are not cured of alcoholism. What we really have is a da daily repri reprieve. Contingent on the main... Contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. To some extent we have become God conscious, or become conscious to, of truth, love and wisdom in my life. I will find truth, love and wisdom if I look outwards rather than try and find it inside me, because it's only a narrow view that I have. It's not worldwide. We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. Somebody called, somebody called it common sense. But, you know, common sense comes from an understanding of what's going on around you and being alert to exactly what is around you, the world. And if we're alert to what is going on in the world, then we have a fighting, not a fighting chance, a chance of serenity, peace. I was going to say a fighting chance. But we don't have to fight anymore. And you may wonder why I tear those up. Simply because I might read them out again as tomorrow's readings. It means I have to print them off and rewrite as I go. So I try and keep these fresh, these videos, so they do, they do change through time. October, all about step 10, the spot check inventory or the daily inventory of what's working, what's not working. Gratitude for, in my case, sober today. My back is very painful with the two slip discs and tra trapped nerve. With the damage done to the foot, is sw the swelling has gone down and the bruises have gone black. But on an emotional, spiritual, I know what my feelings are right now and they fit reality. Like reality today, right now, this moment is okay. So there is balance in the moment of now. <coughs> but that doesn't mean it's going to be balanced all day because I'm going to go out, hopefully, if I can, take some photos 
and see what I can see. The serenity prayer at any time of day and at the end of my videos is my backstop spot check inventory. Can do, change me and my attitude. Can't do, change you and your attitudes. And the wisdom to know the difference. Spot check in the moment of now. I can change me but I can't change you. And that's the wisdom I need to keep on rem remembering as much as possible. So the serenity prayer a prayer for all seasons in the moment and now. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference in the moment and just for today.